One of my main goals in this channel is to upgrade everyone's level of understanding of technology, especially in the cases of cybersecurity and privacy. There's a lot said on the internet and sometimes what is said doesn't reflect reality. Here's an interesting comment. I trust Apple's supply chain more than that of a small manufacturer. Huawei, Lexmark, Cisco, etc. have all been backdoored during manufacturing at different points in time. This was in response to a brief comment I made criticizing Apple in the swim swap video. The assumption here is that Apple's processes can be trusted more to not have back doors. I'm not sure what this trust is based on, so this is something to explore. Here's another fair question. How do we know that the hardware itself does not call home? I actually have a very advanced video that discusses the deep details of potential areas of threat in a phone, but I will focus this video on a more big picture without getting overly deep in detail. Is there a potential for a backdoor in our phones? A backdoor according to NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, is an undocumented way of gaining access to a computer system. A backdoor is a potential security risk. And of course, this was the subject matter of the old movie, War Games. The whole point of a backdoor is that it is basically a secret, a secret known to only a few people. If there is a backdoor in a device, it means someone can access or control the device without our knowledge. Stay right there to elevate your cybersecurity understanding of current technology. Backdoors can be present in two components of our phones. It could be present in the software or it could be in the firmware. Firmware means the programming code embedded into the hardware itself. And this gets very complicated with phones because we have to be clear about what we're talking about. Just to keep this complex topic organized, I will split the discussion into the hardware side and then I'll explore the software side. The hardware side includes the firmware and the software side has the operating system, meaning Android and iOS, plus the device drivers provided by the OEM. So first, the hardware. The problem with a mobile phone is that it is sold with one computing component, which is called the motherboard. This is the guts of the computer on the phone. But this in itself is a misnomer because it is not the same as the motherboard on a normal PC, for example, with one CPU. A phone has actually multiple CPUs. For our purposes, we will focus on the two main CPUs and how they function independently. The first CPU on a phone is called an application processor, AP, and the second CPU is called the modem processor, MP. These two processors are combined in the same tiny motherboard component, and aside from sharing the power source, they also share memory or RAM. The application processor is controlled by operating system software like Android or iOS, and we'll discuss this side later. The modem processor though is controlled by another operating system called a real-time operating system, RTOS. This OS is not controlled by Apple, Google, Samsung, or any other OS maker of a phone. Rather, it is controlled by the companies that make the modem processor. There are only two companies in the world that make modem processors or otherwise called cell baseband modems. And these are Qualcomm and MediaTek. Qualcomm is a US company and MediaTek is a Taiwan company. Qualcomm and MediaTek ships full motherboards themselves with the integrated application processor and modem processor but sometimes they just license the use of their MP to the motherboard manufacturer and then they supply the MP as a chip. The two main motherboard manufacturers aside from Qualcomm and MediaTek are actually Apple and Samsung. In today's miniaturized electronics market, products like phones are actually constructed using something called SOCs or system on a chip. So typically in an Android motherboard, for example, you may get a Snapdragon ARM chip for the AP and then a Qualcomm chip for the MP. 
In this example, the Snapdragon ARM chip is a CPU, but the Qualcomm baseband modem is also a CPU. They are called SOCs because they run a full computing capability with separate operating systems as I described. So to put this in context here, the reality is that all modem processors are made only by two companies, Qualcomm and MediaTek. This means that Apple, Google, Samsung, LG, Lenovo, HTC, and so on are really reliant on the supply chain processes of Qualcomm and MediaTek. They can't mess with the MP because these are all protected by patents and are specifically tied to the cell radio. So this debunks the first issue of Apple having a better supply chain process since all MPs come from the same source. In fact, most of the phones sold in the USA are using Qualcomm. Most of the Chinese originating phones like Lenovo, OnePlus, and Motorola are using MediaTek. Now, this structure of the phone market landscape is important because it ties into the back doors. When it comes to the modem processor, there are already several discovered back doors and some unknown number of undiscovered ones. One of the better known back doors is the SimJacker exploit. This uses a full set of commands on the SIM card called the SAT browser, known only to insiders and I'm sure three letter agencies. This enables an attacker to actually control the calling and texting features of a phone. This could in theory, for example, allow interception and resending of two-factor authentication verification codes. Now this is very advanced and is a state level attack. Other things the phone could theoretically do is call out to another number quietly. This of course has implications like enabling the microphone on the phone remotely. When one talks about a backdoor, it is not the same as a cybersecurity exploit like a hack. A hack could discover a backdoor as was discovered with the SAT browser on the SIM card, but a backdoor is intentional. It means someone programmed remote access into the device. Let me tell you other interesting things on the modem processor or MP side. First, the programming on the device is actually inserted into rewritable ROM. The technology is similar to FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array, which means the firmware can be modified. I've seen some discussion on the internet where it may be built in for the ROM in a baseband modem to receive an OTA or over the air update. How does one communicate with a baseband modem? Well, one way is called a hidden text. There's a way to text the phone and not have a user visible indication that the MP received the text. In fact, there's an app on F-Droid that allows you to send hidden text, probably made for hack testing. My point here in all this is that here's a built-in device in all phones that has already been proven to have backdoors and there have been hacks already proving that you can crash an MP and insert a file into internal storage. Now let's talk about backdoors in general and the assumption that there can be backdoors in the hardware that no one has yet discovered. Back in the day it was discovered that Juniper network routers could be accessed through a built-in VPN connection and that offered remote administrator router management access. Cisco was even in a worse position as multiple backdoors were detected again that allowed remote control of the router. Now these are very big companies. The commenter I mentioned at the beginning of the video said he trusted Apple better because it was a big company. Well, Cisco and Juniper likely control all the major routers and the entire internet, so I don't know how you could get bigger. The question that is raised is how? How did these companies get backdoors in their products? And Huawei, Lenovo, and others also got discovered as having spyware, but that's not on the hardware side, so I'll push that off for later. Let's stick to the hardware and related firmware for now. John McAfee tweeted about this right before he was arrested and died. So this was paramount in his mind. He said that much of the backdoors in these products are the result of plants. For example, the NSA plants a programmer in these big tech companies 
and then these programmers insert backdoor code into the products. Because of the complexity and specialization of these tech products and the integration into miniaturized SOCs, it's basically impossible to test everything. Now, just as the U.S. government could plant a programmer, it would also seem possible that some foreign government could plant a programmer in the same big tech company. So this threat is a general one. On a phone, the area that is full of hidden secrets is definitely the baseband modem or MP, and the companies that could be vulnerable to plants would be Qualcomm and MediaTek. And don't assume that backdoors are not placed without the backing of the company itself. For the right amount of dollars, would a Qualcomm be willing to intentionally insert a backdoor at the behest of a three-letter agency? You can answer that question yourself. There are procedures in place at these companies to ensure that no rogue programmer inserts backdoor code like code auditors and the like. But again, the programming code is complex and if someone wants to hide something, I could think of many ways it can be done. My point here is that on the modem processor side, a backdoor has not only been discovered, but there are likely other backdoors because there has been a past pattern. Now let's talk about the application processor side or the side of the phone that is within the control of the operating system, meaning Apple and Google. And this is where Google gets an advantage. The advantage is that the bulk of the Android operating system is open source. Google Android, or the production Android you get on your phone, is based primarily off Android Open Source Project, or AOSP. Anyone can look at the C source code at source.android.org and examine what Android does internally. I have certainly looked at this source code when I have questions about what Android does. There are parts of Google Android that are not in the open source. Yes, these are large parts, but these are the parts involved with Google spyware. And yes, those already have built in Google Access. Not sure if that's to be called a backdoor since what it does is already well known. Yes, the Google code or GAPS or GAPS does have intentional spyware, so they know everything you're doing in the phone, including location and phone identifiers. That is, of course, the same thing with iPhones. iOS similarly has all the spyware that tells Apple everything about your phone. This includes turning your phone into an AirTag when the phone is off and doing secret things like enabling client-side scanning or the ability to search your phone contents remotely. So on the spyware side, actually the iPhone is a worse spyware device since it is built with more features to track you and the phone. But what differentiates iOS from Google is that all of iOS is proprietary and hidden code. We don't know what's in iOS unless Apple reveals it. Some of the features I know have only become apparent because Apple has used it for some of their capabilities. Because of hidden code in iOS, Naturally, there are less people looking at the source code, so it is more possible to have a planted programmer insert backdoor code in it than would be in the open source portion of Android. In fact, the recent spate of attacks on phones have focused largely on the iPhone. I'm talking about the Pegasus exploit by the NSO group. The targets have been supposedly zero-day exploits on iOS. Zero days or planted backdoors? I'm sure we'll never find out. Although in the early stages of Android, Android had plenty of security flaws, in recent years it has been less. And this is the benefit of open source. More eyes, more security. Initially, more eyes meant more exploit. But that settles down as everyone can easily examine the source code and fix the flaws. iOS will never get more eyes. Now, I do not use Google Android. I use Android Open Source Project or AOSB in my phones. It is also the basis of Brax OS on the Brax 2 phones that I sell. In this case, it is even more secure since none of the proprietary code from Google is there. No spyware and less chance of some backdoor. So in general, less backdoor opportunity on the AP side with a de-Google phone using AOSB. 
But that is not to say that AOSB phones are immune from attacks. I already said that all phones use the same modem processors, Qualcomm and MediaTek. They are both able to be hacked and backdoor without the control of the AP operating system. And there's another threat in Android phones in general that doesn't exist in the same way in iOS. This has to do with the OEM apps and programs on the phone. On the application processor side, an Android phone is actually made up of three separate code partitions. First is the standard AOSP code. There is GAPS code from Google. And thirdly, there is the OEM code that is placed there by the manufacturer of the phone. And this is where the threat of rogue software can be present from a foreign supply chain manufacturer. The fear comes mainly from China since practically all phones are assembled in China. And those who brand specific Chinese models have the independence to load their own software in the OEM area of the phone. Typically, these become system apps and cannot be removed. So in function, they have the same access as a gaps from Google and could contain spyware and other backdoors. The one company that's been finger pointed as being a potential threat in this area is Huawei. So for this reason, I'd stay away from Huawei. It is fairly easy to detect if a phone is calling home using various tools that track network traffic, and this will often reveal spyware. But this is not always effective. An advanced backdoor should respond only if triggered, meaning without the proper trigger, it should be undetectable. My point in this video is to give you all a heads up. Phones by nature have the potential for insertion of backdoors to spy on individuals or a population. In general, only the phones that would be extremely hard to backdoor would be open source based phones like AOS BD Google phones or Linux phones. I do wish that Linux phones solve their technical issues and get more mainstream because the opportunity is being lost here. These phones are the least likely to be compromised by hacks or backdoors in the long term. There are still proprietary code even in Linux phones and definitely in all other phones. For example, the Wi-Fi Bluetooth GPS module, which is one module, is often proprietary. A huge supplier of this is Broadcom. So this is another area that could be a backdoor threat and it would exist in practically every phone. In summary, all these phones are exposed to some threats and some like the open source operating systems are the least exposed to threats, though threats still exist. However, the main thing to debunk is if Apple has some special advantage here on this and clearly it is not an advantage platform when it comes to ensuring that there are no back doors. My company sells various tools to protect your privacy. We have the Braxto privacy phone, a de-Google phone that hides your identity. We have Bytes VPN to hide your IP address from third parties. This service also automatically obfuscates your DNS queries by the automatic use of Pi-hole and also comes with a Tor routing option. We also have the Brax Mail product which gives you five domains that can allow you to manage your mail for better privacy and this service removes your metadata from the header. If you're interested in these products, they are on my app, BraxMe. The link is in the description. Make sure to follow me if you're on these platforms, YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble, and Twitter. Thank you for watching once again, and see you next time.